was born in Seattle, and if you guys don't mind, I feel like I need to talk about Nirvana for just a second. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> That's the best Nirvana joke on the market right now. How do I know that? Because I Googled best Nirvana joke on the market. And the first thing that came up was a tweet that I had posted. Mentioning that that's the best one on the market, so. If you can't trust yourself and who we trust in these days, you know. God. I feel like I'm sweating like I just got through an Iron Man competition. And by that I mean an audition for the movie Iron Man. <laughs> I'm scared of spiders. I guess that's a vulnerable side of me, you know. I'm scared of spiders. It's not like during the day. I'm scared of spiders at nighttime while we're sleeping. Supposedly, each one of us is swallowing three spiders a year. That's like a statistic that's out there. People are talking about it. Three spiders a year while you're sleeping. They're taking advantage of you. And they're not leaving one spider leg behind. I've never woken up with a spider leg in my mouth. I started grinding my teeth every night. That's just a bad habit I picked up. I'm just trying to keep spiders out. So there's that statistic, we're swallowing spiders. How would they know that? Who knows that? Scientists? Okay, I'll buy that. Scientists, they're monitoring us while we sleep? Okay, yeah. But they don't have the balls to just be like, hey, wake up, man. <laughs> hey, wake up, you're about 12 spiders. No, no, no. <laughs> Thank God for science, right? Or is that the other way around? Thank science for God. This, uh, this next song is a song that I wrote for a lost dog. One, two, three. Here, girl. She still hasn't come back yet, but uh, just hoping she gets an iTunes account. <laughs> Can we just get a little more laughter in the monitors? Can we get the lights dimmed down just a little bit? Right, and just bring those back up. <laughs> just so you guys know who's in control. <laughs> Sorry, I just told myself a joke. <laughs> it's gonna be a good show. I'm just gonna start from the beginning. I was born young. In Seattle, Washington. As I grew up, just uh, got older, you know. Life. It was all kind of a blur up till seven when I was diagnosed as having bad vision. Things really cleared up at that point. That's when they start, you know. I remember I was 14 years old, had my heart broken for the first time. When I got home from school, my dad sat me down and he said, Listen, Nick, if you let a bird go and it comes back, then that's a carrier pigeon. You gotta check that thing for notes, you know. And I was like, but dad, what about the girl? And he was like, yeah, she's not coming back. It's, uh, <laughs> she's an eagle. <laughs> you gotta get yourself a carrier pigeon. <laughs> 17 years old, got my first fake ID. In fact, about, I guess a week ago, it would have been my fake ID birthday. 
I would have been 40. And it's just like, where'd all the years go? And I know you're looking at me and you're thinking, Nick, you don't look 40. But I did back then. I want to be vulnerable tonight, you know? I want to let it all out. I love Sudoku. I do, I love Sudoku. It's such a simple game, it's fun. You put numbers in boxes and any number, really. And then you show people. People get pretty excited, you know, because nobody's double checking a Sudoku puzzle. Nobody's got time for that. But. I got plenty of time to put random numbers in boxes. Sometimes I'll just go my phone number ten and a half times. You know? <laughs> enough is enough. It's the same word. It's spelled the same way, really. It's just like, who doesn't know that? But sometimes when people say enough is enough, I honestly think they're just realizing it for the first time. Oh shit. Damn right it is. It is. C sections are like the DiGiorno of pregnancy because it's not delivery, but it's gonna still smell like a delivery, you know? That's that DiGiorno promise that you gotta count on every time, you know? I've overcome a few things in my life, maybe stuff people can relate to, you know? I thought maybe I should talk about when my dad died, I was six, you know, and how hard that was for me. And he used to always carry around a beer bottle. And just brings back bad memories. You know? No, but I thought about talking about my dad dying when I was six and how much that hurt me and affected me. And then I realized he's still alive. That's a lie. You know, in fact, he's like a really great supportive dad. <laughs> which is kind of a burden growing up. It's just like, stop helping me so much, you know? Like, give me demons somehow. Don't make me make them all up. And it's like he flew out from Seattle to see me. He's here tonight. It's just like frustrating, you know? <laughs> give me something to build off, you know? Give me a reason to drink. <laughs> but life is about decisions. Think about decisions. What decisions are you making? I, Recently, I made the choice to move closer to my bank. Just thought it'd be easier to laugh the whole way there. People think you need to be rich to laugh your way to the bank, but I'll just tell you right now, it's about proximity. Just how far from the bank do you live? Can you laugh that far? Because I run and I laugh. I was brought up in the church. I don't really go anymore, but it's still in my life in some way, you know. And sometimes I'll have a dream about the church, and, but it'll be mixed with new things I do, like my iPhone. Like I had this dream recently where I was, I got, I sat down at church, and the preacher came on stage, and he just got right into it. He was like all hellfire, and he's like, "In the beginning, Google created Earth. Now everybody, open up your iPhones to Google Maps. Hit current location." And that's where Jesus is. <laughs> but I didn't have any service. And it's like my cell phone provider is sending me to hell. This set tonight was brought to you by Verizon. When people say thank you, it warms my heart. You know, when they text it, it's a little less. They email, it doesn't really mean anything at that point. But when somebody sends me a thank you card in the mail, that means a lot. I know they're thankful. And that's why I'm gonna write back your welcome card immediately. Because no one's expecting the your welcome card. They're also not gonna expect the gift that I put inside that your welcome card that they're gonna have to write a whole new thank you card for. Just because that's the kind of person they are. They've set themselves up to be it. They have to follow through. And I put the same gift in every You're Welcome card. Because I like to put a little gift in there. Simple gift, Starbucks gift card, right? They're perfect. They're just up there at the front of the counter, plus they're free. 
It's like you can grab as many gift cards as you want. Nobody, there's no price tag there. No one's gonna stop you. Those cards are priceless. Just like the look on someone's face when they get one. It's beautiful, you know. So I put the gift card in my You're Welcome card, put it in the mail, put it out there and just wait. It's gonna be about two weeks. They will call you. They will be inside of a Starbucks. They might say something like, hey, Nick, did you put any money on this Starbucks card? And you just say no. That's a gift card. You can put as much money as you want on that thing. You're welcome. Like I mentioned earlier, I break up when I was 14, but when I was 21 was the real like life changing, like my life is ruined, girl broke my heart. And I thought we were gonna get married and I was talking about it all the time and finally a friend pulled me aside, he's like, listen, you're kind of bumming everybody out. Like maybe just stay home a lot. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, yeah, 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 no, no, yeah, totally. Um, let's go back home and do that. Um, and he was like, I can give you some advice though too. If you get out maybe and do something bigger than yourself and maybe help somebody for once in your life, maybe you will get through it. And I thought, yeah, you know what? Yeah. And it felt like the right time for me to really get out there and, and maybe mentor a kid, you know? <laughs> so I went out to an agency because you got to go through an agency, but the problem is they want to make you fill out all this paperwork and do background checks. And it's just like, hey, just give me a kid. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Why not? Just let me try it out. No one, seriously, off the books, just this one. Because I'll tell you right now, the background check's not coming up good, all right? I got a couple citizens' arrests that I didn't know were illegal. And it's just like, write it down somewhere, you know? Like, you grow up thinking you're allowed to arrest people, and then all of a sudden you can't. So I found a huge loophole in the mentoring program where you can basically just go out and take any kid you want and just start mentoring them and not even tell them about it. You can, it works with adults too, but it's a lot easier with a kid. Um, I'm actually mentoring like 30 people right now. <laughs> so I didn't have time to hang out with a kid, but I did have time to write him a few letters. And if you guys don't mind, I'd like to read them to you. Dear Daniel, How's it going, buddy? I know you're probably super busy right now. I remember what it was like when I was seven. It's a crazy year, you know? Happy belated birthday, by the way. I wish I could have been there. I just didn't think it'd be appropriate since your older sister and I aren't technically still dating. You know? <laughs> How's the first grade? I remember first grade like it was like 26 years ago. It was crazy. Have you started learning cursive yet? Because Daniel, if you're learning cursive, do not let it intimidate you. Because all cursive are, are insecure italics that need somebody else to lean on. <laughs> kind of like how I used to lean on your sister. How's elementary school going? Have you started thinking about what you're gonna do when you graduate? You gotta go to junior high, buddy. I just think like, <laughs> the job market out there for a 13 year old is just shit right now. And it, you know, unless you're overseas, I'd say stay in school. So hey, keep up the good work in baseball. Keep me updated about your sister. Maybe if you could send all the incoming outgoing numbers in her phone. Uh, this market research, I was thinking about buying that same phone. Just needed to know the numbers in it, you know. Durations would be great, but anyway. So um, we'll talk soon. All right. Love actually, Hugh Grant. Just kidding, it's Nick, but you gotta see that movie, buddy. A lot of actors, a lot of plot lines. Two weeks later. Dear Daniel, hope you're okay, never heard back from you. Just because your sister and I aren't dating anymore doesn't mean you and I can't still be buddies. You probably noticed there's no stamp on this envelope. It's because I put it directly in your mailbox. I don't trust your mailman, and I don't technically know where to buy stamps. How's baseball going? I actually read somewhere that you guys won two games last week. It's this local blogger, he picks up T-ball. 
You mentioned in the article that your sister wasn't at the game. <laughs> You probably noticed that I drew a picture of myself and then put it in the envelope and then wrote your name on the corner of the picture as if to say you had drawn it. <laughs> Stupid. I, I don't know. It's just what I was feeling at the time. Um, if you want to throw it up on your fridge, feel free, man. You know, if anybody asks about it. All right, let's, uh, let's talk soon because you're all I have. Nick. It's a final letter one month later. Dear Daniel, have you been showing these letters to your parents? Because I'm pretty sure that you don't know how to file a restraining order. You're seven. What did you, oh, you rode your bike down to the courthouse? But if it sounds like I'm mad at you, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm not. I'm proud of you as your mentor. That was the right thing, you know? Tell the court system 150 yards is fine. Cause like the park around the corner is just like 175-ish. And I'm gonna be there every day between three and four. If you wanna pass me a note to your buddy Tommy or something, who's also a great third baseman. All right, I better get going, buddy. So um, if you don't mind, you probably notice there's a CD in the envelope. And if you wanna pass that off to your sister, just kind of play it while she's around. It's a song I wrote for her, it's called Butterflies. And, uh, there's four tracks on the CD, but they're the same song, I'm just being safe. You know, in case there's a scratch or anything, but. <laughs> Tell Courtney I love her. This is called Butterflies. One, two, three, four. Do you ever think about butterflies? Ooh, I do. I think about you. You're like a butterfly. I want to capture you in my net and stick up in through you. <laughs> and keep you forever. <laughs> and do research. My grandma, my biggest influence, she was amazing. She graduated college, Oregon State University in 1934. You know. My mom used to always say, Nick, if you work hard growing up, she'd say, if you work hard, you go to school, you graduate, and maybe someday, you know, you could be your grandma. <laughs> and that's when I knew college wasn't the right thing for me. <laughs> I don't need school. But she wasn't that smart, you know. Remember, she gave me a gift card a few years back at Christmas. And she said, uh, when I opened it, she said, don't spend it all in the same place. And I was just like, Grandma, you don't understand gift cards. I have to. And I'm going to spend it all at the same time, too. I'm not going back to JCPenney. Thanks for the burden. Five bucks, though. Thank you so much. I keep all the rooms in my house set to room temperature. Just feels right, you know. All my bathrooms are at bathroom temperature. But all my corners, they're set to 90 degrees. Thank you. We all know it's the right angle for a corner. I don't need applause. But people have come over to my house, they've judged me, they've given me advice, they said, Nick, you need a different angle on this, on this house and that joke. And I could, and that would be a cute house. But I don't like math jokes. I don't think I want one in my special, you know? I'd say 12% of you loved that joke. 12%, wow. I love that number. Other comedians might pull me aside and say, listen, Nick, 12% is not enough. You got to get 100% of the audience behind everything you say. I don't look at it that way. I look at it like milk fat percentage, you know. 12% milk fat, astronomical. That's why I judge all my jokes off milk fat percentage. Thank you guys so much for, for being here. Um, sir, how are you? Good. Good. Thanks for coming out. Um, I just want to like loosen up just a little bit here and play a game. You and me? Yeah. Great. Um, 
What, uh, let's see, let's play truth or dare. Why not? Easy one. <laughs> Easy game. Easy game. Um, all right, here we go. Truth or dare. All right. What's your favorite anti drug campaign, truth or dare? <laughs> truth. You said truth? Yeah. You're right. <laughs> Thank you so much for playing. That was great. I, I don't know. I want maybe one more game? All right. Um, this next game is called Ruth or Claire. <laughs> ben, bring it up. We are going to show you a picture of an elderly woman. Okay? <laughs> And we're talking 75 plus here, guys, all right? And I need you to tell me if her name is Ruth or Claire. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, Ruth. Yeah. Ruth. Yeah. <laughs> it's Ruth. Ben, yeah. All right. Two for two. All right. This next game is called Booth or Flair. I'm going to tell you a situation. You're going to tell me if it's John Wilkes Booth or Rick, Nature Boy Flair. Which one of these guys broke his ankle jumping off a balcony at a sold out show? Which one? John Wilkes Booth. It's actually, we were going to accept both on that one. Sounded up. Oh, and we also could not get uh, Ric Flair to sign off on this. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Great. All right. I'm feeling good. I feel like one more. Since we've got, since we've got a plan, we might as well, right? <laughs> All right. All right. One more. This one, you guys, I'm pretty proud of. Um, this one is called Duluth or St. Clair. I'm going to show you a photo of a house. Normal house. All right? Middle class. And I want you to tell me if this house is in Duluth, Minnesota, or St. Clair, Michigan. <laughs> ben, show him the house. Wait, hold on. Show the audience. Ben, show the whole audience. No, Ben, one at a time. Show him. You think you got it? Yeah. St. Clair? St. Clair. St. Clair, yeah. It's actually Yakima, Washington. Thank you so much for playing. You were really great. Thank you, Ben. I was taking a walk, and I was taking it pretty seriously. I was Christopher Walken. <laughs> through a park. I was walking through a park. You find a park, there's a forest. Like where I live, there's forests. Not here, it's just buildings and parks, but some other places there's forests connected to parks. And sometimes I'll just walk right into a forest, you know? <laughs> this specific day, I walked into a forest, walked through some trees, found a quiet clearing about a half hour in, sat down on a stool at stump. So a Dalmatian comes walking into this clearing. <laughs> I've never seen a Dalmatian in the wild. I'm scared, I'm happy. I don't want to spook him, I don't want him to run away, but at the same time, I want him to talk to me, you know? He said, I'm a firefighting Dalmatian. I said, that's Dalmatian 101. He laughed for a minute, said, that's the best 101 Dalmatian joke he's ever heard. I said, it's more of an introductory to Dalmatian jokes. So I said, you're a firefighting Dalmatian, you're in trouble, why? He said, all the firefighters that I work with are stuck in the second story of a burning building, and they're going to die unless somebody saves them. You're the first person I've seen. They maybe got four minutes left. It's a lot. I said, how many firefighters? He said, 25. I was like, why would 25 firefighters be stuck in a burning building? It doesn't even make sense. He said it was a calendar photo shoot. <laughs> a lot of body oils, a lot of pyrotechnics. You know, you do the math. I said, all right but I can't save 25 firefighters. Maybe I could save three or four, but I've never even saved anybody, let alone a hero. He said, Nick, don't look at it like 25. I mean, it's like, he knows my name. <laughs> he said, don't look at it like 25 firefighters because each one of those firefighters are gonna save 1,000 lives throughout their whole career. That's 25,000 lives. I said, all right, take me to the building. So the dog walked me to the building, which felt ironic. 
When I arrive to the building for the first time, I see a burning building. You ever seen a burning building? <sighs> They're beautiful, you gotta see one. Don't make it happen, but definitely try and check one out at some point. Because I'll tell you guys right now, burning buildings are gorgeous. Different colors of like smoke and flames and orange and yellow and red and corporation crumbling and just like everything you've ever wanted to see. And now I know the dilemma that firefighters are dealing with on a daily basis. It's just like, could we just watch it for another minute? <laughs> we gotta run in? So I ran into the building. I didn't touch the doorknob, I ran right to the door. We've all seen Home Alone. <laughs> I'm gonna burn my hand. The second that I get into the building, smoke. I can't breathe, I can't see. My lungs feel like they're gonna pop out of my throat. My eyes feel like they're gonna pop out of my head. I'm crawling on the ground. I don't know where the door is that I came in. I don't know where the stairs are to get to the firefighters. I'm gonna die on the floor of a burning building because some, what, some Dalmatian told me to go in? And now I'm questioning everything. Was there a Dalmatian? Did I take mushrooms? It doesn't make sense. And in a last ditch effort, I screamed out, are there any firefighters in here? Are there any firefighters here? Yes, there's 25 of us. We're on the second story, second door to the left. I said, I can't see the stairs, there's too much smoke. He said, wait about 30 seconds. A backdraft's about to happen. I said, like the movie? Directed by Ron Howard, starring Kurt Russell. He said, yes, except I'm pretty sure it's Kurt Douglas. And it's just like, that's not even an argument I want to get in right now, man. It, you're embarrassing yourself and your whole station right now. But before that argument could even finish, boom, smoke gone, backdraft initiated. I'm running up the stairs. Second door on the left, pounded open, on the ground, 25 firefighters rolling, why? Stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> Three-step process with one major flaw. You gotta put another stop on the end of that, guys. People are dying from rolling too long, and that's a statistic we're not gonna hear about. Firefighters aren't talking about it. I'd say stop, drop, roll for about 30 seconds and just figure something else out, really. 24 of these guys, the second the door opens, 24 of these guys jump up like they've never seen a door open. They're gone, they're running. There's one guy down, he's not moving. He's got no shirt on, suspenders. A rock hard body. He's got a name tag on his left suspender, it says Jason. Just by looking at him, I can tell he weighs like 250, 252 pounds, and I'm just going off sight. So I pick him up, no problem, throw him over my shoulder, run him down the stairs, getting outside, let him on the ground. Firefighting trucks from two counties over coming around the sirens, lights, paramedic trucks, news trucks, three of them, local, national. It's a national news story, and I'm sitting on the one casualty. Is he dead? That's a great question, I don't know. Do I know CPR? No. But do I know what it looks like? You're damn right I do. I got down on one knee and just started making out with a guy. I'm talking open mouth kissing. It's just very gentle, but at the same time, kind of giving it to him. One of the paramedics jumps out of the truck before it even stops moving. She, thank God she's on the passenger side. She collapses on the ground right next to me. She says, is that Jason? I say, yeah, I mean, it was. I don't know if he's still with us. And she said, well, that's my fiance. We're supposed to get married in two days. God damn it. So I grabbed her hand and I said, if he doesn't make it, I will take his place and I will take your hand in marriage. <laughs> and before she could say yes or no, honestly, no expectations on her, she's going through so much. Before she could say anything, Jason coughs. I don't know if it was my foot on his chest, I don't know what it was. I'm not a doctor. She grabs his hand, she says, Jason, I love you! I love you! You're not gonna wanna hear this, I can't be with you anymore. I gotta be with this guy that just saved your life. 
And before I could be like, oh, I kind of overcommitted, I'm technically married. <laughs> kind of got a lot of shit going on right now. Before I could say any of that, I feel a hand touch my shoulder. Turn around, it's a fire marshal. He's got two cameras on him, they're live. He says, Mr. Thune, I've got two questions for you. Number one, do you photo well? Number two, what's your favorite month? <laughs> and I said, you're damn right I photo well. And my favorite month is cover. <laughs>